Welcome to Novel Spotlight, the podcast where published fiction writers are interviewed to gather their insights and writing lessons so we can use them to make ourselves better and more effective writers. There are just three things I ask of you, if appropriate to you and your experience. Please subscribe, please click on the like button, and please share this program link with any family members, friends, or colleagues who might be interested or benefit from the content. Now, on with our program. Hi, I'm Marissa DeCure. I'm the president and partner of Books Forward, where we help authors with promotion and book marketing, including promoting their fabulous audiobooks. And this is Mike Consul, your program host. And Marissa came to my attention based on an article that she wrote for uh, Writer's Digest magazine under the headline, Five Creative Ways to Turn Your Book into Audible Media. And uh, Marissa, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike, for having me. And thank you for this wonderful resource that you provide to authors just trying to navigate this industry. To our listeners, both organizations that Marissa uh, is president of and partner of, the uh, URLs are in the episode notes, as is the link to the article we're talking about from Writer's Digest. And this is a, a topic that is very hot today. According to the article that Marissa wrote, it's one of the fastest growing formats in publishing. In 2020, publishers experienced a 12% increase in audiobook revenue. And that, that, according to Audio Publishers Association, it was the ninth consecutive year of double-digit growth. And uh, Marissa says, despite a global pandemic, but I would argue that perhaps partly because of the global pandemic, because people needed a lot of shut-in time. And uh, having somebody actually read stories to you is a great way to pass time. Uh, and it's something that you can do simultaneous to to other things. So the other statistic that I'll share with you before Marissa starts to elaborate on, on some of the ideas for creating audiobooks from your existing library of books is uh, that the industry is projected to grow to $19 billion by the year 2027. That, that's a lot of cheddar, uh, Marissa. Why are audiobooks so popular? Yeah, they are just sort of having an unprecedented growth. Um, you know, the, the unique thing about listening to a book versus reading it is that it's not competing with a reader's time the way that a print book would. So people can tune into an audiobook while multitasking, you know, cleaning, driving, running errands, uh, and it and it helps them kind of maximize that that limited time they already have. So that's a really unique aspect of an audiobook. And then And I would also I'll just jump in here because people who listen to this podcast know I'm I'm an audio listener. I'm a longtime subscriber to Audible. I read all day long on my regular job. So in the evening when my eyes are burned out, it's really great to have a good voice reading a, a novel to me. And so and I, I do it while I'm on the treadmill, while I'm driving, while I'm lying in bed and so on. They're very convenient in that way. Uh, and it's animated. And, you know, long before we had the Gutenberg, the printing press and books became ubiquitous, the oral storytelling tradition was there. People told each other stories. And now here we are back to back to the past with uh, people actually reading stories to us. And a great reader is a beautiful thing. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But I, I cut you off there, uh, Marissa. Go, go right ahead. What are some of the other aspects you wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah. But I, mean, I, th I think that's great, too. I mean, I know I'm always looking at a screen. And so I like that kind of brain break where I'm not, you know, my, like giving my eyes a break and, um, you know, being able to listen to things. And I'm also from the South and we love a good storyteller. So I totally relate with you on that. We're usually on our front porches, you know, sipping tea and telling stories. So I, yeah, I think it's, it's a beautiful kind of throwback to that art of storytelling. There's so many ways that you can get creative with audible storytelling. And I think that's where audiobooks are, are really going to continue to grow and, and readers will find that they can access stories in so many different ways than they maybe, maybe ever imagined. I did want to point out that, you know, there's a lot of authors out there who have books in print, whether traditional or self-published, and uh, then along comes audio in a way today, I mean, audiobooks have been around for a long time, but they've been very cumbersome and clumsy and of questionable production value. Uh, today, things have changed tremendously. There's, there's opportunities, which is really what this article is all about. And there are people out there who are 
looking for opportunities to take their existing books and get them into audio since since it is such a popular and growing format. And uh, so Marissa is going to walk us through a few of these things, starting with number one. She's got five different tips. So the first tip she mentions is no human narrator, no problem. This is so cool and innovative, and it's starting to become more available in the industry. So it's something to keep an eye on. It's not quite accessible for every author right now, but essentially technology is making it possible for there to be more realistic text to voice. So, you know, we, we've all kind of been there and, and listened to certain things that just sound a little more like a robot or, you know, not that smooth to listen to, but technology is really making some innovative waves in that area for audiobooks specifically. So in one of the places where we're seeing this now, Marissa, I subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. I subscribe to The Economist. Both of those publications have their articles in audio. So you not only can read the article, but they use audio. Now, the uh, just to give you an example, The Economist hires live readers. The Wall Street Journal uses a service, I believe it's called Auden, and it's mechanically read, but it's it's actually very good quality. It's not the most um, it's not the most uh, animated voice. It doesn't and it doesn't sound entirely human, but it's it's very it's got a lot of facility and it reads very well. But what you're referring to here, Marissa, is that technology, including artificial intelligence, is going to take this to a, a whole nother place. Exactly. And the other really great and exciting thing for authors is that this could potentially save thousands of dollars on hiring a narrator. And that is, you know, it, when an author can't afford to hire a professional narrator and bring that element to the their audiobook, I certainly encourage that. I think it's wonderful and it brings a, a beautiful element to the storytelling. Of course, not every author is going to have that budget or a small publisher might need to look at ways to get an audiobook out there a little more affordably. And so that is a, a huge benefit to this really innovative option. And, and the other uh, uh, point that you make in the article is, I'm going to expand on this a little bit, but is it going to be a male reader or a female reader? Could it be Could it be a male reader and a female reader, depending on the character? Uh, also, is it going to be uh, somebody of Demi Moore's voice, or would it be Colin Firth with a little bit of a British accent, uh, or, or Gerard Depardieu? Uh, so we get a little bit of that decure French <laughs> sort of accent um, uh, that's part of your stock there, Marissa. So the opportunities, I, I could even see people with great voices, with noted voices, like, say, a Demi Moore or a Colin Firth or a James Earl Jones, um, trademarking that voice and people paying to use that. Now, we're talking about keeping it inexpensive, but when you stop and think in terms of scalability, uh, it doesn't mean that it has to be all that expensive to say, you know, I'd really like to use um, Morgan Freeman, a very famous right. voice that a lot of people like to listen to. But but short of that, I mean, I, I'm I'm stretching out here a little bit. But short of that, uh, you you can these automated voices, these uh, artificial voices, are going to take on uh, much more human characteristics. There's going to be a lot more diversity there in terms of of the sound. And and I, I'm sure that you've noticed, uh, Marissa, that if you get a book on Audible, very often it sounds a lot. It's a reader, a human reader, but they pick somebody who sounds very much like the author. So as an example, I'm, I'm, well, there's a lot of examples out there where you, because you've heard the author's voice, it's like, this sounds like the author, but has a lot more skill at reading and acting uh, it all out. Uh, and, the, and of course, there are authors who do their own reading and, and very expertly, in some cases, the late uh, Douglas Adams, his book, his, the, the way he reads his books are phenomenal. Oh, yeah. uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Dirk Gently's Holistic De Detective Agency. He reads at great speed and with great inflection. No other reader could have done it because you know exactly where, where to nail it and, and where to um, put, put a, a little uh, uh, lilt in, in the middle of a sentence and so on. Uh, so I'm kind of going on here, but I, I did want you to mention also the sound effects. You're, you're, you talked about 
sound effects as well in the article, because I've noticed that some of the highly pro uh, produced books on Audible uh, have some sound effects or, or a little bit of a musical accompaniment at the beginning or end of chapters and so on. Absolutely. I mean, the opportunities are truly endless. Um, and to think of turning your book into, you know, a, sort of a movie for your ears, that's a really unique way to to reach a wider audience of, of reader listeners. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that uh, the, the new uh, voices that are coming uh, to that are going to be available in the future, they're practically indistinguishable from live reading. So and that's what we're looking for, really, is that. So with sound effects and all, not only adding some professionalism, but but adding drama, it might be Exactly. It might be a kettle drum. It could be. It could be a cello. It could be. Could be anything. It could be squealing tires or what have you. Uh, you know, point number two, you make release your story. Now, th this is this is a uh, another uh, approach. But release your story as a podcast. We call this the serialized novel, and it has definitely made a comeback thanks to podcasting. And there's a number of ways that you can approach it. You can set the book up as a, you know, read chapter by chapter, like one episode being one chapter and release that just chronologically. Um, you can kind of build up anticipation for the next installment that way and use that in forms of promotion, like to build up your email newsletter and, you know, promote it all over social media and just really start getting people excited about, you know, the, the story there, you know, you can also do more bite-sized pieces. So just because, you know, there's a kind of serialized approach of doing it chronologically, chapter by chapter, you get outside the box, you know, you don't need to, to do that. Think about a listening audience and you might be catering to shorter attention spans. So think about, are there more bite-sized episodes that you can do and, you know, perhaps someone wants to select an episode that's only a few minutes long and they don't have time to get into a 15 minute or 30 minute chapter. So the more you can break things up, the more opportunity you have to keep the listener engaged and keep their attention engaged. And also you have more opportunity to promote more episodes. So, you know, when you have a print book release, you're you're promoting that that one book that is out. Well, if you've got a podcast that you are serializing into at least chapters and potentially more, there are so many opportunities for exposure when you're promoting each and every one of those episodes regularly to readers and building up your audience every single time. Yeah, and you know, uh there's a lot of there are a lot of books out there who have very large chapters. I mean, it makes sense mm -hmm. that you would do chapter by chapter, except that there are, I, Norman Mailer comes to mind with uh, uh, some of his books where he'd have these very extensive chapters and um, having having something running an hour or two hours or three hours in length, it's probably a bit much, but there's some natural breaking points, as I think you're indicating where you can uh, break break up that chapter into smaller segments, and um, you also make the, make mention that you want to make sure that you're hooking the listener within the first minute or so, and that when you end that particular uh, podcast, that you you leave them hanging. There's a cliff, a bit of a cliffhanger, something that's going to draw them into the the next episode when you release that. Exactly. Um, yes. You know, it's kind of like, I mean, it's just like when you're reading a print book and you, you want someone to want to turn to that next chapter, or it's like when someone's watching a show on Netflix and you want them to continue to watch the next episode, you know, you, you want to keep them hungry for more and, and keep them engaged. It, it might mean that you need to, again, get outside of the box and not read the book word for word in the podcast, like you might need to restructure and reorganize the novel um, so that it makes sense in a podcast format, just like someone would adapt a novel for a screenplay that there might need to be some edits that you make to the way the story unfolds in an audible format. 
You know, the other thing I'll mention is I was doing this for a while. I was releasing, I was deciding I will release uh, segment by segment, chapter by chapter. And then I just um, <clears throat> take them, I just aggregate them and I've got an audio book. Now I stalled on that. I never follow, I never followed all the way through. But one of the lessons I learned while doing it is that it really worked well. And this is to your point, Marissa, that if I read it more like I was a storyteller than the printed page and I allowed myself to improvise a little bit, not necessarily reading word for word, I was actually finding that that the I thought it improved the writing, my own writing. Uh, you know, you hear all the time about uh, the piece of advice that read your writing out loud. And in the act of putting it into into a audio form, I was learning that lesson as I was going. And I started thinking, this is exactly what I need to do. And with all my future writing, actually go back and even with existing writing, but with all future writing is to, um, to, to make sure that I'm reading out loud and recording it and then rewriting what I've got there anywhere that it makes sense for the written form. So there is a difference between the written and the audio. Now, audiobooks are typically read word word for word, but it doesn't mean, again, to your point, Marissa, that you, you can't do a little improvisation. Right, right. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of, of, of these options that authors have. It's again, it's, it's a, a, these are new, innovative, creative ways to reach a wider audience. Again, get outside the box. Like you don't have to totally play by the rules here. You know, there are, there are ways to, to reach readers that, you know, you just don't have to follow the traditional norms. I mean, that's why a little off topic, but something like TikTok is really having such an impact in the industry right now is it's, it's different. The, the, there are these bite sized videos out there that are capturing attention. And so, you know, think about how, how that has impacted things and, and, and impacted book sales in general and just trends in the industry. It's amazing. And so, Think about what could be possible if we didn't play by the rules always with how we're presenting books in an audible way. You know, we had a person on the podcast uh, long to, quite a while ago, and she made the point that not only is she an author, but she's a marketing person like you. And she said that uh, of, of all the social media that she's used, she said TikTok is the most powerful for actually promoting book sales. It, did you, it, do you, it sounds like you found that to be the case as well, Marissa. Yeah. I mean, we work with a lot of authors on, you know, getting their brands out there and we work with influencers on the platform. It's, it's really having a big, genuine impact, real impact in the industry, you know, not only with sales, but trends of what publishers are looking for and, it's really amazing to to see. Um, it, there are no guarantees for what's going to take off, you know. So it's like, you know, it, it actually makes me think there should be a, a sixth, um, a six bullet point in our article of like, there's probably a way you can do your 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 book, you know, audibly in TikTok. And I would love to see someone tackle that. I think there's so much opportunity there. I imagine it would look pretty different, but. Yeah, the possibilities there. Wow, that would be yeah, pretty amazing. A lot of episodes. Yeah, and also there's a, there are people who write flash fiction. I mean, it's it's perfectly right. suited to flash fiction, exactly. where you're going to you know Good stories uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tip number three, and again, this is you know the past meets the present again. Uh, release your story as a radio play. Radio theater has been around for decades. But again, audiobooks are kind of bringing us back there and giving it this resurgence, which is incredible. And most notably, perhaps, you know, an author like Neil Gaiman has taken some of those novels, beautiful novels, Neverwhere, The Sandman, and put them into radio plays with multiple voice actors, sound effects. You know, we talked a lot about how you can make a, a an audiobook more than just reading and you have the sound effects and the musical cues that come along with it and really making it into a film for your ears. Um, so that's just one example of, of what's been done really well there so far. And I would love to see more authors 
playing with that, especially certain genres, I think would, would lend so well to it. And, you know, if you have different accents of characters or exciting action scenes, or, you know, th- there's so many things that would play well audibly. So mm-hmm. pulling that mm-hmm. into this kind of theater type format would be a really unique way, again, to reach more readers and listeners. And you make the point in the article, I'm reading directly from the article here, radio plays rely on dialogue between characters rather than an omniscient narrator to convey the action and a variety of sound effects to create atmosphere and setting. They are truly a movie for your mind, which is, um, I, I think that sums it up really, really well right there. Let's go to point number four, release your story as an immersive fictional podcast. Another very fun option that I love seeing the creativity that that authors have started to put into their audible media. One example is a very well-known fictional podcast. So this is Welcome to Night Vale. And what they did was rather than just reading a story about a town called Night Vale, the creators of the podcast decided to create a quote unquote real radio show from the quote unquote real town of Night Vale. So they really put you right there in the center of the town and the action and made you feel like you're you're in this fictional town, kind of putting a unique spin on the book. And I know a lot of authors, they you know either create fictional towns or they set books in in places that you know, are very familiar to them. So there will be unique ways that you can kind of bring news of the community. The the way they did it for this particular show was doing a twice monthly podcast in the style of, you know, those kind of traditional community updates for the small town. So that's, that's just one example of how they could do this. And, you know, they were doing like local weather news announcements, police reports, Um, mysteries going on in in the town, cultural events. That's one example of how to do it. But again, you know, an author, you will know your material and the town that you're bringing up, the setting that you're exploring and the audience that you're trying to reach and some creative ways that you might be able to spin that. Interesting. So in point number five, or tip number five, release your story as an interactive podcast. One of our authors that we work with, for example, they have a choose your own adventure series. That's like a perfect example of how that particular series could be turned into a more interactive format audibly, where you release one episode, you're getting listener feedback and comments and engagement you're being able to promote that, you know, in social media and in comments and kind of getting the buzz going online in a really organic, beautiful way. So finding ways to further engage your audience and have them be part of something, part of part of even to the extent. Yeah. I mean, part of the story. Okay. And even to the extent that I would imagine you'd be able to say what should happen next. So they've, they've been exactly. um, familiarized with the characters. They understand the storyline, but what, what, what now? So you haven't necessarily written the entire story. You, you actually have the input from your listeners, those who are fans, those who like your writing, who like your, your audio presentation and co-create the book right. through this interactivity. Right. And, you know, I think this is more common and something that authors and and fans of like fantasy, the fantasy genre are are a little more used to because there are things like Dungeon and Dragons, like the game where, you know, you're you're kind of part of that storytelling and you have the, the person at the I don't play the game, so I'm probably not explaining this perfectly, but. Um, you know, there's someone that's kind of that that leader in shaping the story, but everyone's part of making that story go forward. And so, yeah, if there, if there are ways to engage listeners to to really be part of it and ha- have them have sort of like a stake in in where the story goes, and you know, they're they're going to every reader, you know, gets so connected to characters and you know, what they want to see in a book, but to give them the actual ability to control that and have 
a say in it, you're you're creating an entirely different experience for them that, you know, most readers could only dream of. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not a video guy either, but uh, I believe uh, what you were talking about there, Marissa, is that you have options. You make a choice. And if you made a different choice, it would go down one path. If you made a particular choice, it would go down a different path. And in that way, you're interacting with the with the storyline, which t- goes off into several different tributaries or several different channels or what have you. You make these these decisions, and it's a it's a very rich media in the in terms of a, a video game. And obviously, this is something that's that's quite involved, and in, it's not for everybody, but it is for the person who's who's looking to. I mean, writing can be pretty isolating, and the idea to have uh, people helping you co-create something and getting their input and uh, what they think should happen um, can can be a could be a, a pretty heady process. You know, it reminds me of the movie Misery. That's a Stephen King novel, the one that they turned into the movie, and James Caan. Uh, ends up running into one of his biggest fans. He had just killed off, or was in the process, I think he was working on the novel at the time, was killing off her favorite character. And it became a life-threatening situation because she didn't want this character to die. It's like, you bring this character back to life or you're dead, was basically the... Did you ever see the movie Misery, Marissa? You no, know, I didn't, but I'm fascinated by this. <laughs> it's it's a, It's very well worth it. It's a very good movie. I never did read the book Misery, and I don't typically watch movies when Without I haven't reading, read the yeah. book. Yeah. I mean, they, they do kind of ruin the movie because, or the movie ruins the book, I should say, because the book is always so much richer. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's one example. If you talk about interactivity, obviously you're not talking about that. I'm not talking about that other than, uh, other than it was more of the great imaginative storytelling from Stephen King. And um, it, it's a, any listeners out there who haven't seen the movie misery, it, it really truly is worth watching James Caan and, Kathy Bates and Kathy Bates, I think, won uh, an Academy Award for that performance. She's uh, always outstanding. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, um, again, the title of the article that Marissa contributed to Writer's Digest is called Five Creative Ways to Turn Your Book into Audible Media. The link to the article is in the episode notes. Marissa, really appreciate you taking the time, writing the article, and then coming on and, and walking us through it. Appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. I mean, you know, and I I never want to discourage someone from, you know, putting out what they might think of as just kind of a basic audio book. But yeah, I would just encourage people to have fun. And again, think outside the box, you know, like we've been talking about throughout this conversation and find ways to engage with your readers in, you know, a more unique format. Well, and and the way a lot of writers do that is they're, they're part of, um, these writers groups. Yeah. And so fellow writers give them information. But I would say, um, and I, I, again, this is to your point, Marissa, number one, your point number one, no human narrator, no problem. That's probably the option most people are going to take. A lot of the other ones are going to, well, not so much doing a, a narrated podcast, That number, your, your uh, number two uh, point. After that, it gets into much more, uh, it's much more elaborate. You could, you, but the <laughs> right. idea that you're able to, yeah, I mean, not everybody's a producer, but um, certainly your audiobook can be turned, your, your book, your written book can be turned into audiobook using, using uh, a lot of these uh, computer generated voices, which again are getting much better uh, than, they, than they used to be. And then the concept of releasing it. Uh, as a podcast, as a series. And then you can make the decision whether you want to release it so that people can binge listen, like you binge watch on Netflix or just decide, no, I'm going to release this gradually. The danger of releasing it gradually is, of course, I think you'd agree, Marissa, that people get distracted and they forget to come back to episode two or five or 10 because they get swept away with other stuff. Whereas if you've released uh, it in batches anyway, or even exactly. in its entirety, then people can start to binge and they get hooked. They get immersed in it and they just plow right on through, or they've completed that first batch of say, maybe 10 chapters or episodes or what have you. And they're chomping at the bit to the, get to the next batch. 
That's exactly right. Yeah, I would encourage people to to do things at least in batches, especially if you are a first time or lesser known or unknown you know, debut author and you're trying to build up your audience. You've got to have enough material to hook them and and keep them you know, engaged. So yeah, just doing one chapter will not be enough. And you really need to release more in order to keep them engaged and, and keep building your readership and hoping that, you know, they, they continue to listen if you are releasing in a batches for that second, third batch and however you decide to ultimately release the full book. Yeah, there's a reason it worked for Netflix, so it could work right. for you too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody grab your microphones and start recording. Marissa, again, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much and good luck, everybody.